This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they usually say our seasoning would take your barbecue from good to great. The Mad Canadian food truck is heading to Cary this Wednesday and Thursday and Tiffin on Saturday. Wednesday, they'll be in Cary at the corner of North and Patterson between 4 and 7. Also in Cary on Thursday at Market 113, which is, which is at East Finley Street near the intersection of South Bay Street. And this Saturday from 5 to 9, so after that Ohio State game, hit up the Tiffin Brewery located on Wall Street in Tiffin, Ohio. Again, this Saturday from 5 to 9. If you forget any of what I said, check out the Mad Canadian social media sites. Twitter, Facebook to figure out where him and his food truck are heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based premium, small batch, roast-to-order, veteran-owned, hand-roasted, micro-batch coffee company based out of Perrysburg, which is near Toledo, Ohio. That was not my best reading of all time. All of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. Integrity is at the core of what they do, and it shows in the flavor of the beans. It's not just about, I mean, it is about doing the right thing. It, it is morally doing the right thing by making sure your stuff is fair trade certified, by working directly with the farms, by only roasting in small batches. The, these are the morally right things to do, but it also helps produce the best possible coffee. It's it's a twofer. It's it's morally correct, but it also helps make the best possible coffee for you and your breakfast cup to make sure it gets to you in the freshest possible manner. Uh, so you can pick up your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Kyle. Uh, YouTube, Discord. What? Nomad. All right. Thanks for hanging up, Nomad. <laughs> uh, your sister-in-law's birthday? Eh. Eh. Sister, maybe. Sister-in-law? Eh. All right. Uh, this is our... This is where we're, we're, we're doing our new format here. Um, we did what we're calling our uh, standard and grade, almost called it the scarlet and grade. Um, but we don't want we don't want to infringe on anyone else on that one. So uh, Mondays will be called our standard and grade episodes. Uh, and Tuesday, we're going to take a look at the national scope and we're calling these the uh, collegiate chaos episodes. Yeah, so let's got a lot to talk to, Jared. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get right into it. All right. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Pretty well. How are you, Jared? I uh I have like almost a full week of of football in my belly, so I'm doing good. Yeah, I'm glad glad football is back. I got to see got to see many many games this weekend. Fans in the in the stadiums too. Fans got to in see the, the whole that bands as well. Yeah, it's it's great to see college football back. But also with that, we get to see <laughs> we get to see some bad football. We get to see some yeah. great football. Yep. <laughs> All right, so Kyle, let's let's get right into it. Um, initial thoughts, um, would essentially just be, if you want to do, do you want to, how, how, how do we want to format these? We're still figuring this out. Do you want to jump straight into the tiering and talk about the games that way? How do you feel about that? I'm mostly fine with whatever, whatever we have in our notes here, we have all of the games that we kind of want to possibly mention here or talk about so i'm honestly fine if we want to start big 10 and then go out or if we just want to just find whatever we 
feel let's, we're interested in talking about. Let's, let's let's jump straight into the tiering, and we'll end up talking about the big games just as a result of that. Maybe, guys, we're still sure. this is a new format for us. We're we're figuring it out. So let's let's do that. Um, let's I'm gonna do that. I need to recover the Zoom window, and we're gonna do that. Everyone got a quick peek at the show notes. Those are supposed to be top secret, you guys. So that was fun for everybody. Um, so, all right, here we are. We're we're uh, we're looking at the at tier list here. This is after week one. So, Kyle, um, probably the biggest game of the weekend from a national perspective: Georgia and Clemson. Um, how how are you feeling about Georgia? How are you feeling about Clemson? Um, just what what's your thoughts? So no no offensive touchdowns all game <laughs> no That's... offensive touchdowns all game uh so it's both both very good defenses uh, i'm i'll give credit it was a very defensive game i thought both defenses played very well but man i like there's something definitely going on with with clemson here offensively like yeah. i know i know they lost they lost so much productivity to the NFL last year, but Clemson's one of those teams recently in recent years that they should be reloading and not not rebuilding here. So is that, is that what we potentially might see this year, or is this just the fact that Georgia's defense is that good? I, I think that's a great question, and it's not a question we're going to have an answer to right away. I think we have to see how Georgia plays through the rest of the year. And I think we have to see how Clemson plays through the rest of the year. Um, like on, on, on one hand, Uyunglele looked bad. He looked very bad. On the other hand, he was running for his life. What felt like most of the time, um, because Georgia's defense was constantly pressuring him. So like is Clemson's offensive line bad or maybe at least substandard, is Georgia's defensive line just that good? Um, we we don't we don't we won't know for sure. I'm leaning towards, yeah, Clemson maybe being a bit average, below average by Clemson standards this year, and also Georgia just having a ton of talent at least on the defensive side of the ball. So, I, I I'm not I'm not willing to like throw away Clemson yet. I still think that they are going to win the ACC, at least their division, make it to the ACC title game, potentially play North Carolina or Virginia Tech. So I'm not I'm not giving up on them. I don't even want to say they're out of the playoffs. Um, so I don't know. How, how are you feeling about Clemson? Like they're not they're not S tier after last night, but maybe A or B tier. Yeah, I I probably put them in A tier for right now. Now move them from S to A tier. Uh, <laughs> Rushing 23 times and only netting, netting two yards all game is very concerning. And I think a lot of that could be with their offensive line there. But I, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and put him to A. I really want to put him to B, like what Gingland just mentioned in our uh, Sloop Cat live chat, which you can be a Sloop Cat by becoming a Patreon in our uh, Discord. Uh, Two yards, yeah, that's very concerning, but I'll, I'll give him benefit of the doubt and put him in A for right now, but keep a closer eye on them in the coming weeks. Uh, so the, on the other side of that equation, we have to talk about Georgia, who I thought looked tremendous, um, at least defensively. Offensively, I, I, you know, they were still playing Clemson's defense, so even if they looked not completely collected at times, they were still playing against a really good defense. Kyle, I'm willing to put Georgia in the S tier for right now. Yeah, yeah I would put them S right now. Yes. It's a it's a win over a top team here, especially a team who's made the playoffs the uh a lot. So yeah, I I put them in S tier. All right. Uh real quick. We we talked about Ohio State, Minnesota on the Monday episode. Um so let's let's just go ahead and place them. Um, Minnesota, I think like B, I'm willing to call like B like a good conference team, a, a good yeah. quality conference team. 
Um, I, yeah, I think I think Gangland brings up a good point. B with with Ibrahim. Yeah, if they don't have Ibrahim, they're getting bumped down to a C. We don't have clarity on what that injury is yet. We'll, just, we'll put him to B for now. Yeah, but if if Ibrahim's like out for the season, they're going down a notch. Yep. And Ohio State, I know that they looked a little struggly at times. I'm putting them in the S tier. I they're still a, like a national title contender in my mind. You know, even if they're dealing with some, some September issues for right now, trying to get CJ Stroud completely comfortable. Yeah, we'll we'll get into that, but there's many other teams that's in that same boat too. Yeah. So right. speaking of one of the yeah. speaking of one of those teams, Oklahoma and Tulane. Oklahoma beats Tulane 40 to 35, a five point victory over the green wave. Yeah, and let's let's not Let's not overhype Tulane here. Like they're they're fine. They're good. But if Ohio State, let me let me say this. If Ohio State had that sort of game against Cincinnati, and Cincinnati is much better than Tulane. If Ohio State had that sort of game against Cincinnati, how would you feel right now? Not great. I would feel I would feel if I can talk, I would feel good about it because of what we know offensively of Cincinnati, well, in general, not just off offensively, but defensively too. Just a good team that Cincinnati is this year. I, I feel like that's a good win if you win by five. I'd like to win by more, but five points, I, I would be like, okay, a good win. But with right, Tulane, Cincinnati though, in my mind. <laughs> but Tulane, though, <sighs> no, I, uh, five points is not... Not that good, especially when the point spread. You, you do you know what the point spread was for Oklahoma Tulane? It was over twenty, wasn't it? Thirty-two and a half. Yeah, and you win that game by five points. Um, you're supposed to have a Heisman candidate quarterback who is not, uh, and like I know it's supposed to be like a God-given right as an Oklahoma quarterback to be, but no, just like no. Um, I'm yeah. I'm willing to bump Oklahoma. I mean, not not B, but man, they're a much lower A right now than Clemson is. They're not S. I them, yeah, I put them A for now. I put them A. Yeah, it's it's A, but it's a low A. It's a very low A. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, next game here that I have that I'd like to talk about North Carolina and Virginia Tech. Man. Yeah. I was way I was way off on this one. I was the <laughs> only person, Tech, oh, the only person in the sloop picks. Which, by the Virginia way, Virginia Tech, I beat you in this week. Yes, you did. Uh, Virginia Tech beats North Carolina seventeen to ten. Now, yeah, I thought I thought North Carolina would have had a lot more. Yes, exactly. Team chaos reigns in, in this in this uh, game here, but. Now, I thought North Carolina's offense would have scored a lot more than that. I mean, total points was projected to be 63, yeah. <laughs> only 27 yeah. here. Yeah, it was definitely wasn't expecting this good of a defensive showing from Virginia Tech. So Virginia Tech, a lot better than we thought, perhaps. Uh, yeah, and, Virginia, and North Tech, Carolina at work. Virginia Tech, if we would have done this in week zero, probably would have been like C or just like not even. We probably wouldn't even bother to put them on the board. I think they've earned their way up into the B slot. And I think that North Carolina probably has fallen after this game from the A slot to the B slot. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree. Uh, if I could find here they are. North Carolina down to the B slot. All right. I'm just going off of rankings here. So well, can we talk? I want, talk. I want to talk about Penn State, Wisconsin. I feel like that's a that, that was the that okay. was the next thing I had on here. Penn State beats out Wisconsin in another defensive um battle here. Uh 16 to 10 up in Wisconsin. That's a much needed win for Penn State, who's struggled yeah. heavily in winning top 25, top 25 teams on the road. And they get one in week one against Wisconsin. Yeah. And, and like, once again, it's week one. So how do we play the game of. Are both of these teams actually much better than expected, much worse than expected? I was a big Mertz fan for a long time. And 
the honeymoon period's over there. Um, I'm not willing to anoint Penn State. Um, I'm I'm not willing to put them above a B. Um, I'm just not. And quite frankly, Wisconsin, who was a solid B in my mind, I think I got to knock down to a C. I agree. I, I agree with both of that. It's just this game, it, it just came down to who was going to have that one drive that made the difference. And Penn State, well, not just that, but I think Penn State, I think the key stat here in this game was that Penn State stopped Wisconsin in the red zone. I think Wisconsin was like one for four. One for, yeah, I think they were like one for four in the red zone. They just kept fumbling the ball and turning the ball over like yeah. it was. One of the most un-Wisconsin Very, things I've ever seen. And it's one of the reasons why I'm not willing to anoint Penn State and move them up to an A tier is because I feel like in many ways it was Wisconsin losing the game as much as, if not more than, Penn State winning the game. Because, yeah, just, yeah if, if it, yeah, I... In many ways, Wisconsin looked like a really good team who is very, very, very capable of self-destructing. Yes. Yep. I, I put them both uh, at C tier. You want to move Penn State down to C tier? I think yeah. they I think they belong in B tier. Are, are you saying they're below North Carolina, Virginia Tech, Minnesota? I think they're on the same level. Yeah. B tier. OK. Wisconsin, I knocked down to C tier just because of their quarterback not living up to hype and them just looking very self-destructive right now. Okay. All right. Uh, let's move on to Ohio State's next opponent, Oregon. Oregon <sighs> escapes a win here against Fresno State 31 to 24. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could chalk a lot of that up to first game rust. Um. Yep. If you if this was a team who you were maybe considering an S tier, which I wasn't, but a lot of people were, um, I think this proves that they aren't above an A tier right now. Um, yeah, I think they're I think they're a middle middle high B because I, I think they have a pretty high ceiling. But from what we've seen in week one, yeah, I put them in a I put them in a solid B right now. All right, we'll we'll bump them down to B. Um, okay. Tribodeau got hurt. Uh, we don't know the extent yeah. of that injury at this point, how that's going to affect the Ohio State game or not. All right, let's do one or two more games real quick here. We'll hit a ad break. Uh, let's do Iowa State. Iowa State was a top 10 team here, and I'm trying to find their score here. Uh, do, 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 do. They beat, yeah, that's right. They beat UNI, yeah. Northern Iowa, 16 to 10. This was a team that was an A tier, I would say, coming into the week, and they are not anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so I think in the same way, if we bumped if we bumped Oregon from an A tier down to a B tier because of week one performance, I think we give Iowa State the same treatment. I agree. I agree. And what about Texas A&M? What about Texas A&M? <laughs> what about Texas A&M? <laughs> uh they uh they ended up covering up what was a bad game by scoring some points at the end um uh, but it was still a, a, is i don't know it's it's a week it was one a game. 10 to three yeah yeah it's i i think i think they're so a very very talented team um yeah a lot of turnovers in that game for them they threw four um interceptions they lost a fumble too so they were, uh, was that five, three? There were minus three in the turnovers in that game. I have a hard time putting them, keeping them in the A tier, but man, they're so talented right now. I'd, I'd probably bump them just for this week to be, but. Yeah, you, you mean you clean up those turnovers and you move back up to A, but it almost kind of feels like right now B is the default answer. And I, and I think honestly, that's that's fair. Yeah. Um, All right. Uh, you clean up those turnovers, you get back up to A tier. But for right now, you're in B tier until you do that. Yep. All right. Let's go ahead and do a quick ad break here. We're a little over here. So let's go ahead and hear from our good friends over, Jared, from the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, hold on. I'm 
struggling. The the graphics switch over. I need to. Are fine. I'll, I'll, start, I'll start off with the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company Please while do. you're doing that. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the Mad Canadian is located in Cary, Ohio. Uh, great, great company. Even better food from their food truck. Uh, you can check out the food truck locations and carry this Wednesday from four to seven on the corner of North and Patterson this Thursday, also in carry on the on market One Thirteen, which is on East Finley street. And this Saturday uh, from five to nine. So after the Ohio state game hit up the Tiffin brewery where the man Canadian will set up shop, um, which is located on wall street again in Tiffin, Ohio, between five and 9 PM. Uh, if you forget any of that, check out his social media, Twitter, Facebook, find out where he and his food truck are heading to. Mad Kenny Barbecue Company, where they are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, the Iron Bean Coffee Company, actually, I'm going to go ahead and slide that back up there. And we're going to look at some Iron Bean Coffee. How about that? Let me put it on that side. There we go. Uh, let's take a look at some of the coffees. Uh, we talked about some of the flavored coffees on the Monday read. Let's talk about like a let's talk about the fierce. This is a darker as coffee. Uh, darker as coffee. Um, USDA certified organic and fair trade, just like all the other one. Uh, this one's uh, smooth, never bitter, low in acid acidity. Um, available in any of the grinds you want. Uh, this is a blend of robusta. Uh, it's an award winning arabica beans coffee uh coffee uh will wake you up uh let's see what else we got uh let's scroll down let's let's find another dark roast let's talk about the odin i think that's a favorite in our discord um usda certified organic fair trade smooth never bitter low in acidity um Odin uh, will keep you fighting long after you should have gone to Valhalla. This is a, a great dark roast coffee. And if we keep scrolling, we keep scrolling. Uh, let's take a look at the integrity. Uh, the integrity is the flagship roast of the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, mainstay selection, rich, dark. Um, it, this is also what they would sort of, uh, if you were making an espresso, what they would suggest you do that. Organic Peruvian beans, notes of dark chocolate and black cherry. Uh, one of the many great coffees available from the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company, uh, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Jared, let's let's get right back into it here. Uh, staying in the top 10 here, according to the AP, that is. Uh, Cincinnati, Cincinnati taking care of business over Miami of Ohio, 49 to 14. Yeah, um, Kyle, do okay, you do something? Took, took care of business. You want to do something ballsy? Top 10 team taking care of business in week one. You want to put them in the A tier? Uh, for other for other teams that we've seen over the weekend, I, I don't see, I, yeah. I could not disagree with you. I could not disagree with you on that. Uh, by the way, we were recording this before the Notre Dame game. Um, yep. So would, would you just want to stick them in A tier for right now? Yeah, we'll just put Notre Dame in A tier for now. Yep. For, we're not going to bother to rank Florida State. Um, uh, if they if they win this game, good on them. Florida State sucks. If they struggle or even lose this game, they will fall out of A tier. But. That's just not information we have right now. Kyle, do we do we want to put UCLA anywhere in here? Two straight wins. Um, they demolished Hawaii. They made really convincing work of LSU. Do we want to put UCLA in the chart? I, I think you probably want to put them in B tier right now. I think so. I think you probably put them in B. It's I when well, I first was thinking nothing about them. Else, like, I don't know if they stay there. I think maybe they get bumped down to see at some point, but they have really nice momentum right now. Yeah. I, the beginning of the show, I was thinking, oh, UCLA C tier, like with LSU, I think LSU would be C tier right now. But yeah, I'm, I, I kind of think that UCLA putting LSU at D. Right, right there on the B, B right now. I put LSU on the C, but they, right. they can go up or down, maybe down, but I, I put LSU C for right now. All right. Uh, Florida, Florida, um, 
takes care of Florida Atlantic in the second half here. Uh, 35 to 14. I'd this love was to a close battle. This was a close, close game in the first half here, but Florida took it away here. Uh, probably again, just some dusting off some old or dusting off some rust here from Florida. <sighs> Maybe B for Florida. Yeah, I, I don't see. I don't see them anywhere else right now. I think that's eventually I think there's a team that should be an A tier team like Texas A&M potentially like say Penn state. I think it should be an A tier team, but we just haven't mm-hmm. seen that yet. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep them at B for right now. Although it's a high All B. Right. All right. USC, the Trojans take down the Spartans of San Jose state 30 to seven. I, I don't know if I'm ready to take USC seriously yet or not. Um, I'm not willing to put them up above a C right now. Yep. C C is good with me. C is good with me. They they have potential. They could move up into B hell. They could move up into a, but I I'm just too burnt out on is USC back or not to care. All right. Uh, Speaking of about... which, let's go ahead and just drop Michigan in C tier as well. <laughs> All right. What about Texas? Put Texas in C tier as well. Yeah, why not? It's again like you can have all the good games against bad opponents you want. I'm I'm just too burnt out on the question of are you back or not to notice you until you start beating some real teams. Yep. Also in the C tier, let's add Iowa. The Iowa to the C tier really? win over a win over Indiana, thirty four to six. I thought Iowa looked really good in that game. I think. I went from not respecting Iowa at all to having a decent amount of respect for Iowa. That's I think, why I put them in C. Oh, I don't know. I'm I'm thinking Iowa's B and Indiana gets dropped down to C. But Iowa, I think, belongs in B. Mm, well, this is where we disagree. I think I think you keep Iowa at C or put Iowa at C. And then Indiana just falls off. But. They had a really nice conference win against a good team. Okay. I, I, I'm not going to disrespect them by putting them in C. All right. Well, who you can disrespect here is Washington. Good. Losing Lord. to losing the uh, losing to the Grizzlies seven to 13. I understand so they're, they're a very good off. FCS team, but they're an FCS team. Washington. Congratulations. You're, you're our first D tier of the week. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, let's see. Teams we have not covered here. Coastal Carolina. Don't I, I don't even I don't even nope. think I have a Coastal Carolina on the graphic. What about Utah and Arizona State? Both both the winners uh this week. Uh Utah beats Weber State 40 to 17, and Arizona State takes care of business over Southern Utah 41 to 14. Uh keep them at sea. Yeah, that's fine. Um I can't even find the other one. It's fine. It's fine. Move forward. All right. Um, what about Sparty? Sparty, Sparty taking down good. Northwestern 38 to 21. Yes. Michigan State State scoring 38 points to a Big Ten opponent. I think they went from like us not even paying attention to them to a C. I think that's fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so, too. Or may- maybe a D, but. Maybe a C. What about Maryland? Maryland taking down a Big 12 opponent was being West Virginia, but still a yeah. power five victory, 30 to 24. Well, we'll put them in C. I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. What about Purdue then? Purdue taking care of Oregon State, 30 to 21. Oregon State. a lot closer than that. I, I, that, that, that has hurt my opinion of Purdue. Oregon State is... Historically, one of the absolute worst teams in the Power Five. So, I'm gonna. It's a bad win, in my opinion. Mm. I'm putting them in D tier. At least, at least it's a win, unlike what Illinois did against UTSA. Who I'm lost not even, put, I'm not even putting Illinois on the chart. I'm not mm. even putting Nebraska. The- All right, well, fuck it. We'll, we'll put them on F. I'm putting Nebraska down there as well. And what about Rutgers, since we're finishing up the Big Ten teams here? Um, I'm okay with scoring putting Rutgers at C. Points. What's that? Scoring 61 points. Against? T- 
temple. Okay, I'll, I'll put him at C tier. Ooh, that you're being very generous there, but okay. C <laughs> tier, uh, like I, I feel like I've not put anyone anywhere worth respect ab- above. Anyway, it's fine. Um, okay. We mentioned West Virginia. I'll put them like at E. Why not? Who cares? Um, the um, anyone else you feel like we really need to put on the chart? Oh, Alabama. Duh. Let's put Alabama <laughs> on the chart. Uh, Alabama's yes. an S tier team. Miami, I'm putting it at, at C tier, D tier. Uh, I mean, it's Bama. They got run off the field, but it was against Bama. I, I, let's put them at C. Yeah, let's put them at C for now. I, I feel like they could get lower, but let's let's put them at C then. Uh, uh, Northwestern team to, team to team to look out for. I know, I know they play South Florida, but keep an eye out for the Wolfpack. They have a really good defense this year, so keep an eye on North Carolina State. I'd say put, put NC State at C. Uh, sure. i just say, just, just keep an eye out for them. Sure. Oregon State's garbage. Um, anyone else you feel like we really need to put on the chart, or, or should we move forward? I, I'm just looking at I honestly... How do you feel about At Auburn? Auburn, Penn State's coming up. That's the only reason I even bring it up. Yeah. yeah. Like, I know the end score ended up looking okay, but it was a struggle against a very bad team. Um, I'm going to put Auburn at D. I think Penn State wins that game. I really do. I think so, too. Uh, we don't have Northwestern on there yet. If you wanted to round out all the Big Ten teams, D. I'm sorry, what? D. D. I'm I'm okay with D. D might even be generous, but we'll we'll go with it for right now. Um, I I don't I don't see anyone else on the list who I feel like it's abs- I'm scrolling my eyes over. Um, uh, yeah, you know what. I'm I'm getting some feedback. We're 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 bumping Northwestern down to E. Getting some feedback from the point. chat. Um, Missouri Navy, Mississippi State is. I'm gonna go ahead and throw Mississippi State on here as an F. Um, I don't see anyone else on this list who I even feel compelled to find a spot on the chart for. No, and I'm looking through all the games, and I really don't think we should spend any more time as we are over on time jared so okay. i think this is a good good way to end this show all right let's see if i can get the pod why i still don't get why my podcast thing all of a sudden stopped working um my frame's not working and i don't know why what if i come over here and i hit- jared's doing that i'm just gonna kind of briefly look <laughs> at some games for for next week here uh we've got the Ohio State oregon game uh Going to be talking a lot about that. Uh, game day is heading over to um, Ames, Iowa, Iowa and Iowa State. That's a top um, twenty matchup there. Uh, who else? It. Who else? Who else do we care about that um, for this this week? Kyle, we'll we'll um, we'll, we'll talk about the games the- coming up on the Friday episode. Uh, I fixed the thing, so you don't have to worry about killing any more time. Um, All right. Let me get my show notes back together. And here we go. Uh, right, yeah, um, let's, let's do some ask Sloop Kai's questions, actually. Yes, let's do that. Uh, does Miami, uh, from Gangling, does Miami ever belong in the top 25? Yes, um, but that says more about the top 25, the current state of the top 25, than it does about Miami. Yes, 100%. Uh, Buckeye born and bred. Why are your what are your thoughts on um, Thibodeau's injury? Um, is he going to play next week? I I mean I I don't know. They got an X-ray back. The X-ray looks fine, but the X-ray really only tells you what the bones are doing. Yeah. So nothing's broken. That's great. Um, even if he plays, you have to wonder if he'll be at top condition. We just don't know the extent of the ankle sprain at this time. It looked scary when it happened. So how much of that was them being cautious versus the injury actually it's 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 hard to say we 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 really just won't know we just really won't know 
Yeah. Stewart asks Georgia Clemson, are they that good or just evenly matched at mediocre teams? Um, I, I think Georgia's defense is that good. And I think Clemson's defense is still pretty good. I think we saw two. I, th- I think we saw an elite defense and a pretty good defense is, is what we saw. Um, I don't yeah. know what to make of either team's offense at this point, but the defense has won the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Stewart also asks, is Alabama truly number one or is Miami a trash heap? I mean, it can be both, right? Both. I mean, Miami's not a trash heap. They're just not. They're not a. They're not on the same level as Bama, but who is? Yeah. Uh, last question from Stuart. Are Michigan and Texas back? No. I mean, I see no evidence of it at the very least. Maybe they are, but I, I've seen no evidence of it yet. Yeah. All right. Uh, Buckeye Esquire asks, what position, group, or slash side of the ball was most impressive to you nationwide? Uh, Georgia's front seven. Yes. Georgia's front seven. If I had to pick one thing that I was legitimately surprised by, it was Georgia's front seven. Uh, oh, New young didn't his... have time to fart back there. No, my good. What's his name? Uh, Jordan Davis is a, just a man among boys out there. He is the, the um, nose tackle for, for Georgia. He is a big boy. Yeah. Uh, they're big... they're stacked in the, in the front seven at Georgia right now. Uh, last question. And also Buckeye... just like all of just all the other thing, Bama basically replaced their entire offensive line. And it, it you could not you wouldn't have guessed it just by watching. Yeah, that's the other thing I'll say is Bama's offensive line is still somehow amazing. Yeah, and uh, and hats off um, to. Um, to Williams too had a had a really good game too for yeah, Alabama. Yeah, Jamo, I'm happy for him. Yep. Uh, last question, Buckeye Esquire. Uh, we're going to get sub- subjected to national discussions about Notre Dame again, aren't we? Probably. It's fine. I don't. <laughs> Let him get into the playoffs, and hopefully Ohio State gets to play him in the playoffs. That's all I'll say. Yep. All Especially right, if it. the ACC <laughs> falls apart. You know, you had the best two teams, the most playoff worthy teams in the ACC both lose this week. Now, I'm not going to repeat the mistake of uh, certain people in the past who, like after a Virginia Tech loss, claimed an entire conference was eliminated from the playoffs in September. I'm not going to do that. But it's the ACC is working from behind the eight ball right now. That's for sure. Yep. All right, Jared, that is all for this episode all right um everyone check out the sleepcast.com that's where you'll find links to all of our stuff for t-shirts and for the patreon and for the discord twitter and instagram and all that all that crap so go to the sleepcast.com and you'll find links to all the other stuff uh kyle speaking of the uh, georgia clemson game we had our first ever maybe our second ever but it's the first time we ever branded it as such um we had our first ever sleepcast social screening uh You, me, a bunch of our patrons uh, got together, watched the game over Discord and talked and laughed and drank. And it was it was a lot of fun. I I, it was it was a whole lot of fun. Uh, Some technical issues aside. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, if if you want to join us. uh, Anyone in our Discord could have like watched and chatted along. Uh, Only the patrons were allowed to like actually talk. but. Um, if you want to join us or if you at least want to observe it, you can do so just at discord.thesleepcast.com. If you want to talk along and 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 whatnot, you can become a patron. As little as $3 a month would get you access to everything. Um, and you can do that at sleep or uh, patreon.thesleepcast.com. Kyle, that's all I got. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, Not really, just U.S. soccer, just needs to do better <laughs> so do the crew um, yeah the crew does too yeah i feel they were getting okay. bailed out of a lot of games early on by their goalie and that's just not sustainable 
It's just not fair. Nope. It's not sustainable. And they're not getting those bailouts anymore. And they're giving up too many damn goals. Yep. And early on, Jared, as we're recording this, Ohio State opens up as a 13 point favorite. So basically the same as as Minnesota. So what you're telling me, what Vegas is telling me, Kyle, is that Minnesota, this team that Ohio State should not have struggled against because they're apparently so bad, is just as good as Oregon, who is supposed to be our huge super opponent. Yep. OK, I'm just just making sure. That Oregon equals Minnesota. But apparently a lot of Buckeye Nation's trying to also tell me that Minnesota equals Akron based off of what they expected from Ohio State in that game. Mm -hmm. Guys, it was week one against a really good opponent. Forgive Ohio State for not looking um, just next world amazing. Okay. All right. That's it, Jared. Let's go ahead and end today's episode. All right. Uh, tonight's ending episode will be brought to you by uh, country singer Lydia Loveless. Uh, she just released two new songs um, just a couple weeks ago. Um, the name of her, I don't know if we call this an EP or if it was just like a double single or, or what we're calling it, but um, it's called You're Leaving Me. One of the songs is called You're Leaving Me. The other song is called Let's Make Out. Uh, so uh, I'll be playing one of those two songs. I don't know which one yet. I haven't made that decision. But um, the audio only listeners, you guys will get to hear that song up next. The YouTube folks, um, you won't because YouTube, but uh, there are links down in the description if you want to click on it and, and listen anyway. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Uh, once again, this is Lydia Loveless. What's up, YouTubers? Um, like I said, the audio folks are listening to the song right now. Um, YouTube doesn't support local artists by allowing me to play their music. So that's on them. Um, but uh, if you guys could uh, do us a favor, uh, follow, make sure to follow us. If you're listening to us on uh, Buckeye Scoop, make sure to follow Buckeye Scoop and uh, follow us on our own YouTube channel. And if you're listening to this on our own YouTube channel, make sure to follow us and also follow the Buckeye Scoop. You'll get a link for both of those up on the screen here shortly. And uh, just click on those and you should get some links. And with all that being said, peace. I said that too soon. I didn't have the button over the thing. I'm stopping it now. Now I'm stopping it. Okay, peace. Mm -hmm.